Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about the Star Wars Holiday Special from 1978. There's some things that have gone down in history as being the absolute worst. And the Star Wars Holiday Special is 100% considered to be the worst thing that ever came out of Star Wars. Counting the prequels, Jar Jar, literally everything, there's nothing worse that had the name Star Wars on it, except for like, I guess that Reagan thing or whatever, than the Star Wars Holiday Special. And I had actually seen it before, but with friends, and we talked through it, and we laughed, and we talked about other stuff, and we got bored, and I'd never watched it by myself, because I thought, well, if I'm gonna review it, I should really sit down and watch it and just ruin my soul. I did not know how bad this thing was until you watch it by yourself. You have not gotten into the depths of depression that you have absolutely wasted your life liking something until you've really watched this. Now, that doesn't take away from the original movies, but it does take away from the fact that you're like, this, how did I get here? It's kind of like being in a back alley buying black tar heroin, and there's kind of a realization that this has maybe gone too far. And when you get to the Star Wars holiday, special that's kind of what it feels like because you're just like oh my god this is horrible <laughs> this is the worst piece of shit i don't even understand what the point of this was much like a lot of bad things like the recent gem movie it's a lot of things coming together and you're like so who was this for i mean i kind of get it but like it's so all over the place you're like but really, who was this for? Like, was it for everyone? And by indication, clearly no one with any taste. This was incredibly bad. This was like beyond the worst thing. This is fucking horrible. But it was made because Star Wars came out in 1977. This came out right before Thanksgiving on November 17th, 1978. And they basically made it to sell action figures, to sell toys for the coming holiday season. And probably one of the reasons they did that is because there was a weird thing with Star Wars toys. They didn't make enough of them because no one really knew Star Wars was going to be the biggest movie ever in all of existence so they didn't make enough toys so they'd actually sell like kind of like coupons if you sent it in then you'd get a toy that's how they kind of dealt with it but by 1978 clearly they had dealt with all that or I assume they had and all the toys are in stores and so they wanted a special to be like hey now we have all the stuff you want because the movie's not as big but still you probably still like Star Wars so they made this special to spike up sales because really how George Lucas Lucas made all his millions and billions and why Disney wanted to buy it wasn't exactly because of the movies it's honestly more because of the merchandise like for real that's really why I mean, it might sound cold but Star Wars makes a shit ton in merchandise I have a ton of Star Wars merchandise as a kid everyone who liked Star Wars at all had to have 20 million things and all that money went directly to George Lucas's bank account or at least a percentage of it he owned the merchandise rights so of course he wanted to make this special and CBS came up with this variety special holiday thing that somehow made sense to everybody and thus we are stuck with this horrible atrocity of holiday specials and Star Wars combined to make an abortion of televised media and by abortion I don't mean I'm not to say anything bad about abortions I'm saying if you were to look at the aftermath of an abortion it would be similar to this Chewie and Han going back to Chewbacca's planet for life day it's kind of like a Christmas like holiday they don't say Christmas so why am I filming this in front of a tree but it's a holiday special it was for Christmas stuff so so Han Solo and Chewbacca are trying to get to Chewbacca's home planet so he can see his wife kid and grandfather then the Empire is attacking them and they might not make it there so then we watch the Wookiee family lumpy stinky smelly I don't know their names they're like lumpy mala and itch wow his name's really itchy lumpy Mala, his name's really itchy, huh? So his name's really itchy. Yeah, so he has to get home to his family who he never talks about, but he speaks Wookiee, so maybe he was talking about him through all of New Hope or something, I don't know. So Han and Chewie are trying to get to the Wookiee planet for Life Day, better stop. And so we spend a lot of time with the Wookiee family, and then Art Carney's involved and has a store that sells stuff to Wookiees, and then they kind of message Luke and Leia, and yeah. 
I don't know what this is about, but it's basically they're trying to get home for Christmas. Like, it's, you know, plot-wise, it's like a lot of Christmas specials. That made me feel better, maybe. Lucas claims he had no involvement in this. It seems to be that's, like, really not true, but he didn't have a lot of involvement in this. He did want to make something for the holiday season, and I do think the thing with the toys probably had a big factor in this being made, because he had a reason for 1978 to still be a big Star Wars toy buying season, but he was busy preparing Empire Strikes Back. Big Sophie's Choice that one was, I guess. He was busy doing that, but he got a couple of his friends from USC, Dave Akamba, and believe it or not, Bruce Valanche, and got them involved in the Star Wars Holiday Special. Now, the funny thing is, Bruce Valanche knew that this was a horrible idea, but the idea was to combine a variety show and Star Wars to make this holiday special. The problem and why it's hard to describe the plot is because it kind of doesn't really have a plot. I didn't grow up with variety specials. If you're younger than me, you didn't because variety specials kind of were ending at this time. You had a failure like this. You had another notorious failure like Jeff and the Pink Lady. Sonny and Cher had ended. Laughing had definitely ended by this point. The Carol Burnett show had ended at this point. So all of the big things that made variety shows that were the most popular variety shows had ended. And, and all the times they tried to make newer variety shows, they were a horrible failure years like the late 70s is not known for great variety shows that was kind of more a 60s 50s thing but it didn't really live on after that they've been trying to do it kind of more recently and it sort of works they were trying to do different things with the genre i guess because clearly they couldn't do the same old thing and they didn't have talented people so they kind of combined this star wars with that they don't have a host segment where like you know jeff and the pink lady or sunny and cheryl cara burnett talk to the audience or something although that would have been a lot better or worse i don't know they have this plot where you watch a bunch of Wookiees talk for 10 minutes and are confused that should there be subtitles even though I read and have watched this before and knew there weren't subtitles it felt like there definitely should be but there weren't so you're watching a bunch of Wookiees talk to one another Art Carney is involved you have a lot of bizarre celebrities it's trying to be like a variety show Star Wars hybrid which are like two things that should not go together at all and then musical performances and the Jefferson Starship it has too many things David Akamba who was Lucas's friend at USC. He was more of a rock guy. He did a rock concert special called Welcome to the Fillmore East and he was really not happy because a lot of the producers on this were more get it done yesterday quality to TV and they were more film people so the ideas kind of just didn't mesh and he only filmed the B. Arthur segment and the Jefferson Starship segment and that's all he did and those are actually the better of the live action segments. Everything else was done by Steve Binder who did the Elvis comeback special and also did the Diana Ross and Central Park special. Those parts really don't work. There was nothing good that came out of any of the variety parts. The B. Arthur song is at least watchable. I kind of think if David Akumba had directed the whole thing, it would have been probably a lot better because even his Jefferson Starship performance like kind of works in a weird way. Same with the B. Arthur thing is at least a little watchable. <laughs> it made me actually kind of enjoy it for a little bit. And there are certain things like Art Carney kind of seems to actually try to give a shit. Art Carney from The Honeymooners. If you really want to watch anything from this, it's the animated segment in this film produced by the animation studio Nelvana and that has the first appearance by Boba Fett. It's kind of odd that Boba Fett's first appearance is in what is considered to be the worst thing that Star Wars ever produced. I kind of like the design of it in a weird way but Han Solo's face is extremely exaggerated so is Luke Skywalker's it kind of reminds me of the Marvel comic book where it's like really bad renderings of these actors you have to make animated characters out of them and I kind of like it for the sake of what it's doing and then Lucas had a good relationship or Lucasfilm at least had a good relationship with Nelvana because they later did the Ewoks and droids cartoons that would come out later in the 80s so if any relationship came out of that it was certainly that one there's some debate over whether the Art Carney character was uh, a character that was later developed and turned into Lando. I just don't, I'm not even gonna act like that's a, a real thing. <laughs> at all. The idea for the Wookiee planet and where the Wookiees lived was later used in episodes 3, Revenge of the Sith. So there are certain ideas that like Lucasfilm later used that were introduced in this, believe it or not, holiday special, but it's so misguided. Like, I think they were trying to appeal to kids primarily, but like, why have Jefferson Starship? Why have, there's a segment that they were trying to do like a softcore porn thing to get past the censors where this lady's singing for the grandpa Itchy, which really didn't fit. There's a part with like acrobats 
cuts for Lumpy. Just like really a lot of things that didn't make any sense at all. The thing about Star Wars is Star Wars is this postmodern masterpiece. It combines all these different ideas to make something amazing and incredible. And with Star Wars, it works. And I can understand if in 1976, if you heard about Star Wars, you're like, wow, this is going to be the biggest bomb of all time. And George Lucas got it to work and made it one of the greatest films of all time. The Star Wars Holiday Special shows the opposite of that, where you have all these ideas and they do not belong together and they do not know how to get them to work at all. And they just make this horrible, very boring special. And apparently, actually, the cartoon plays at about the hour mark when this aired on TV. And ratings actually take a nosedive at that point, which is exactly right because the cartoon is the only redeeming part of this whole thing. And then there's a part where they interrupt the cartoon. The cartoon's 10 fucking minutes long. Like, oh my god. It's just, they did get all the original cast members, Harrison Ford, Mark Hamill in his first appearance post car accident. So it looks super weird because they don't know how to get that to work. Clearly, they would later because they had that scene in Hoth where he gets attacked by the monster and stuff. So that they got it to eventually work, but at this point he looks like his hair's super blonde. He looks almost like he's not Mark Hamill. Carrie Fisher gets to sing a song because she requested it and actually is the only one who's gotten a copy of the Star Wars Holiday Special from Lucas because after she recorded the commentary for the first Star Wars, the DVD commentary, she asked to have a copy of it. She uses it to get rid of people after a party. It like really empties the room, which I can imagine because it was hard to stay awake to this piece of shit. Harrison Ford was actually asked about it on Conan and they played a clip of it and Harrison Ford doesn't like to talk about it. Most of the original cast either said they haven't watched it or they really don't like acknowledging it. I don't know how they got involved and how much they got paid and what Lucas did to get them back. A lot of them say it was a contract thing, but other things I've read said they had to like entice them back and none of them were really having successful careers between Star Wars and Empire. Harrison Ford hadn't even taken off yet. I mean, he had with Han Solo, but not as like a Harrison Ford like headline starring vehicle kind of guy that we knew him after Empire. He had Indiana Jones and such, but he hadn't had that yet. So maybe they just had to do it for the money or something, which is super sad. This is a horrible atrocity. I don't even really recommend watching it because what would you get from it. It was clearly a marketing stunt. It was put on on the night that The Incredible Hulk and Wonder Woman aired, which apparently aired on the same night. That was a smart programming on CBS's part, but they aired this on that night instead when clearly like people who would have watched either of those shows would gladly watch a Star Wars holiday special, which it didn't do that well. I think they wanted it to be number one. It was like number two. There's only three networks on then, but it was kind of considered a failure and never aired again in America, although I've read overseas it was aired a couple years in a row. So I guess Lucas either just didn't care or didn't know about that. It was just a marketing thing for the holidays and since it's around the holidays we're probably used to them. It was just they went about it in a really bizarre strange ass way and it ended up being this weird thing that got tape traded a lot. A lot of the commercials the fighting furies at 11 was then referenced on the first South Park holiday special because it got tape traded so much it became this weird obsession but by the time you get to the end of it you're just depressed and alone and cold and shaking and you wish you hadn't experienced this movie. This is probably one of the worst things that the holidays have ever created other than like commercialism. This is like the worst Christmas special I've ever seen. It's horrendously horrible. CBS really did nerds a huge disservice and Star Wars fans a huge disservice by making something like this and this was even before they made something as horrible as the Big Bang Theory. It's kind of a morbid curiosity if anything and that's really the way it should stay. It's fun to watch with friends because you can absolutely talk over it because there's no plot. It should have never been made and it was made at a time that they didn't really understand how to deal with something like Star Wars. Star Wars was a completely new entity. Sci-fi being a huge uh, genre was something new and it was just kind of an awkward time in pop culture and this special definitely reflects that. The fact that they made a variety special for Star Wars instead of just some dorky little holiday animated thing which would have made a lot more sense and probably could have played for longer. Not that the Nelvana stuff is that great but it kind of just reminds you of what really is the success of Star Wars and it's commercialism it's merchandise that's what Star Wars did to Hollywood it really introduced merchandising and how you could make more off the merchandise than the actual movie and Star Wars holiday special points that out so blatantly because there's no other lesson to learn from this except don't do drugs although everyone says Carrie Fisher's like on a lot of coke 
I mean, do we know that? Or are we just assuming because this thing's so bad? Everyone looks like they don't want to be there. This is, just shows you how ugly commercialism really can be. That it could make something as awful as this that could just sell a bunch of plastic crap. Although, I mean, it's plastic crap I like, but it's still plastic crap that will eventually destroy the Earth and ruin us all and bring about the end of humanity. So thanks, George Lucas. Thank you for the Star Wars Holiday Special. And thank you for finding a way to even ruin the original trilogy. Oh, I guess he did that already it's really unwatchable it's an endurance test this is beyond bad it's not funny bad it's boring bad and it just keeps hitting you over the head with boredom like you're stuck in middle school all over again that's what star wars holiday special is like avoid it at all costs so if you have seen star wars holiday special and you would like to talk about it then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to and uh have a happy holidays and may the force be with you i guess I don't, I don't know.